All right, let's get started. So we're starting lying on our backs this morning. If you have a yoga block, let's take it between the knees and the thighs. Pausing here to focus on the breath. Got it. Placing the hands on the lower part of the abdomen. Good. Focusing on the breath as we inhale, expand the belly, breathing down into the lowest parts of the lungs. Pause, press into the yoga block, and now exhale as if you're going to blow out a candle. Relax the thighs, no pressure on the block as we inhale. All of our energy is diverted into the belly, into the lowest parts of the lungs. Pause, hold it there, embracing the fullness of the breath. Squeeze the yoga block, and now exhale. Pause, relax the thighs, inhale. Squeeze the thighs, exhale. Pause. We're keeping that rhythm for the next five to 10 breaths, adding in that pause after every inhale and after every exhale. Clearly dissecting each part of the breath and also making that space so that we notably are able to contract and release the thighs rhythmically with the breath. Let's do at least two or three more. Full inhales, absolutely no rush, rush, lifting the belly, squeeze, exhale. Inhaling, there's no pressure on the thighs. Pause, squeeze, exhale. And now just keep squeezing the block the whole time, making the breath seamless. Inhale, filling the belly. One, two, three. When it's time to exhale, pursing the lips. Three, two, one working on seamless breathing, inhaling in through the nose, exhaling, keeping the seamless breath and continue to squeeze the block between the thighs. The pressure is, I would consider it to be a very light to moderate pressure so that we're just keeping this constant connection of the mind to the body, diverting energy into the lowest parts of the pelvis and thighs with a constant steady pressure, steady endurance of that energy. At least one more seamless inhale, continue to squeeze the block. Seamless exhale. From here, let's take our block, place it off just to the side of the mat as we'll be able to use it later. Let's draw our left knee in towards the chest and we can hold on either to the sides of the leg or behind the knee and the thigh. Let's point our left toe. As we point the left toe, we're able to stabilize some muscles behind the knee while we pull the knee straight in towards your armpit or towards the center of the chest. So you can angle it in just a little bit. Inhale, flatten the foot and push the leg away, maybe even straightening that leg out. And it could go 45 degrees. It could straighten straight up towards the ceiling, just allowing the leg to move into any steady stretch while we straighten out the leg. Let's point the toe, take a big breath in, Exhale, pull the knee in, either towards the armpit or the side ribs, maybe center of the chest, allowing the hip to angle in any way. Push through the heel, inhale, straighten the leg out. Exhale, point the toe, pump the knee in. Inhale, press flat foot. Exhale, pull it in. 
One more set. Inhale, extension. And exhale, pull it in. Keeping the toe pointed, let's lift the leg up towards the sky with the pointed toe. Now push through a flat foot and simply alternate point and flex a few times with a few times with the foot. Then go ahead and circle the ankle in each direction. And I like to do about six circles in one direction, then do the other side. And we might notably have more mobility in one direction, just making a note of that and moving on. When you're ready, come to a still point. Let's lower our foot down to the floor, keeping the knee bent. Maybe feel that the left foot is in alignment with your left hip bone. Let's draw our right knee in, pointing the toe, holding on to the sides of the thigh or behind the knee. From here, as we inhale, we're flattening the foot and pushing out straight, big breath in. Remember the leg could go diagonal, it could go straight up to the ceiling. Exhale, point the toe, pull the knee in. Now, the first few, you might take several breaths. Inhale, extend, hold the extension while you exhale. Inhale again. And now exhale, point your toe, pull it in. So we're gonna do a few of them slow before we do one breath, one movement. Inhale, stretch it out, push through the heel. Maybe straight up to the ceiling, press the right hip down into the floor. Option to point the toe, find the breath, and then exhale, pull it in. Adding in that rhythm, one breath, one movement. Inhale, extension, flat foot. Push the right hip down into the floor. Exhale, pointed toe, draw it in towards your armpit or center chest. Inhaling, extension, push. Exhale, point and pull in. One more, inhale, extension. Exhale, point, pull it in. Keeping the toe pointed, let's extend our pointed toe straight up towards the ceiling. Hold it there just for a moment, then flex, push through the heel, and point a few times. So we're loosening up the Achilles tendon, the front of the ankle, and now circle it in one direction. Six circles. Wow, I'm gonna tell y'all, I am, my ankles are tight, 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 tight. I work out in the garden, and I think working in the yard is probably the, the that's like a Navy SEAL workout. I got six hours yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't bad. It feels like boot camp working yeah. in the yard. Roll it the other direction. I took the broom and I, I took it around all my windows and my patio. I couldn't figure out why my ribs were tight. I thought I just had bad gas, but it was a sore oh. muscle. <laughs> when you're ready, let's slowly come to a still point. Lower the foot. Both knees are bent. Let's take our feet out, maybe as wide as our yoga mat. It could be a little more conservative than that. We're going to move nice and slow with windshield wiper knees. Our hands are going out to the side, kind of like a T. And we're pressing the palms down into the floor. You can even push down with your fingertips. Take in a big breath. On the exhale, let both knees fall towards the right. And as they go towards the right, your left hip might come off the floor. You could push into the left foot. You could even squeeze the left glute muscle. And this is going to thrust the front of your hip open. So. We're targeting the inner hip for flexibility before we come up to standing. Let's slowly come to center, take in a nice big breath, big inhale, and then exhale. Let it sway over to the other side, holding it there. The breath is gonna be a little more shallow while we hold the twist. Continue to relax your jaw, push into the right foot so you can lift your right hip and maybe even squeeze just the right buttocks region to further open. So the more you squeeze the buttocks, 
the more it's going to activate low back muscles and it's going to create a softness in the front of your hip. Let's bring it to center. Nice big breath. A couple more times slow. Exhale to the right. Holding it there. So we always try to hold it just a little bit, moving nice and slow, giving the body time to kind of organize different neurological instructions before we speed it up. This is kind of like our dress rehearsal before we do the, the, the synchronized one breath, one movement. Let's bring it to center. Exhale, twist it to the other side. Again, we're gonna hold it here. So the hold will be through maybe three to five cycles of breath. Remember at any time, if anything feels harmful or painful, just trust your intuition. And if it's painful, come out of the pose. When you're ready, bring it to center. Let's try the one breath, one movement. So we inhale at center. Exhale, gentle twist to the right. Maybe not a huge range of motion because we're moving faster. Inhale, center. We're rocking onto both hips, finding neutral. Exhale, twist to the left. Use that breath. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist. You can even push into your left hand as you lift that left hip. Inhale, center. Exhale, both knees to the left, push into your right hand. It's okay if the right shoulder comes off the floor a little bit too. Let's do one more each side. Inhale, center. Choreographing the movement with the breath. Flowing yoga is much like a beautiful dance. Just find the rhythm of the breath and flow with that. Inhale, center. Last twist is over to the left with the knees. We'll bring it to center. From here, we're walking our feet in close, lifting our heels as we pull both knees in towards the chest. Hands go onto the sides of the thighs, avoiding any pressure on top of the kneecaps. Let's point and flex the feet again, bringing some energy down into the ankles and the soles of the feet. While we're here, we can grab our yoga block again. This can be done with or without a block. Placing the block in the most narrow position between the knees. From here, for most of us, it's probably like 99.999% of people. This is going to ensure a healthy bone alignment. Let's keep that gentle pressure into the block. We'll lower our feet down into the floor. Pressing the palms down onto the floor just beside our hips. We are in what's called CRP, the constructive resting pose, resting the psoas muscle. Squeeze the inner thighs. On the next inhale, imagine you're trying to drag your heels back, but don't move your feet. So you push down into the feet, pull the heels back, and you'll feel your spine or your tailbone slide towards your heels. Once you feel that little slide, push down into the feet and now begin to lift the hips, coming into bridge. From here, slowly lower the hips down with the hips completely flat to the floor. Let's reach our arms up as if you're gonna paint the ceiling and now sweep the hands back as if you're trying to paint the back wall Open up and stretch the armpits. Find your breath. When you're ready, lower the hands down, palms down besides the hips. Pull the heels back. Inhale, press down into the feet and lift the hips. Press into the inner and outer blades of the feet with the same amount of effort and attention. Find your inhale in the heart this time, big breath. And now exhale, lower the spine, lower the hips and rest it there. Arms come up as we inhale, sweep up, exhale, reach back, hold it there. Inhale, reach behind you. Imagine somebody pulling on your wrist, big stretch. When you're ready, take the hands down beside the hips. Let's find our breath. 
Inhale and exhale in place. Pull the heels back. With your next inhale, we're pressing the hips up. Exhale, lower the hips down. Adding in one breath, one movement. Inhale, arms go all the way back. Big stretch. Exhale, hands come down beside the hips. Pull the heels back. Inhale, lift the hips. Squeeze into the block. Exhale, lower. Inhale, arms go back. Alternating upper body and lower body. Exhale, hands down. Exaggerate those exhales. Inhale, pull the heels back. Squeeze in and lift. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, arms overhead. Last time through. Exhale, hands come down. And now just relax there. Let's squeeze the block. Think about sweeping your left toe away from the floor. Keep squeezing the block and extend the left leg out 45 degrees with the toe pointed. So we're able to strengthen the upper quadricep here, the upper part of the leg, without compromising the low back and without a lot of pressure into the ankle or bones. Lower the left foot down, keep squeezing into that block. Maybe take your left hand onto your left hip and push your left hip down to the ground. Right hand onto the right hip and pelvis. Both hips are gonna stay grounded. Squeeze into that block. Extend the right foot up. Continue to press into the block. The longer we hold this, chances are we might start to notice some sensations building in the inguinals. That's gonna be like the crease above the leg into the groin area. We want those muscles to get tight. When you're ready, slowly lower the right leg. Let's try one more on each side, slow. Push the hips down. Inhale, sweep the left foot out, pointing the toe. So we're stretching through the front of the ankle, strengthening and tightening the inside of the hip while it's open. Keep it there, squeeze into that block. Three, two, one, slowly take it down. Inhaling, extending the right leg. Continue to squeeze into the block. Nice, strong midline, nice, strong inner thigh, inner knee, arches of the foot. Everything moving straight up from the tailbone to the middle back, behind your heart, into the head itself. Slowly bring it down. When you're ready, let's take that block once again, just off to the side. Let the knees sway a little bit left and right, giving the body just a little bit of time to maybe unlock any places that could get tight when we were activating those pelvic floor stabilizers. Now notice which side feels more comfortable to roll towards and allow your body to roll towards that side. We're lying on one side, at least two or three breaths with the knees in and the spine soft. Breathe through the sides of the spine, relieving the pressure on your spine and backs of the lungs. Let's take our top arm to the floor in front of us, using that top arm to slowly press up coming around into seated. We could use our mat for a little extra cushioning. I've noticed through the years, the floor is not getting softer. It's not, it's not. <laughs> so give the body some cushioning and support. We're using our block again between the middle of the knees. We're using this a lot because as we want to keep the body safe and prevent injury, that all begins with a strong spine, which is the center of the core. 
We're taking our hands, the fingertips. If you were to sweep the thumbs past your hips, the fingertips stay facing your hips or facing your heels. From here, we're sitting tall. Squeeze that yoga block between the knees. Notice when you bend your knees, if it feels more comfortable to flatten your feet to the floor, maybe we lift them halfway, maybe we pull them all the way up. None of these positions is considered more or less advanced. It's a matter of finding the most comfortable place for the ankles and feet before we move up into the hips. Let's squeeze that block, extend the left leg only as much as the body permits. So our body already practiced this movement when we were lying flat on the floor. When we were lying flat, fewer muscles had to assist us. It should feel a little different now, right? Relax your jaw, right? Relax it down. Let's push through the right foot, extending. If you notice that it feels maybe just a little more intense on one side, you're normal. You're normal if it feels like more work on one side. Lower it down. One more time, slow on each side. Extension, remember your foot can be flat or pointed. You can change your mind anytime. Notice how that affects comfort in so many ways. Just this, just noticing flat versus pointed might, might inspire you to go get different shoes. <laughs> shoes with a heel. All right, let's try this one breath, one movement. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, down. We're going to kick it out a few more times. Inhale, kick. Exhale down, inhale, kick, exhale down, one more each side, inhale, kick, exhale down, one more, inhale, kick, exhale down. All right, go ahead and take this off to the side. Let's let our knees sway over to the right. So you're almost in like a side seated position with knees to the right. Yes. Yep, you're seated just like me. Knees are facing that way. Is your body facing this way? That's it. Okay. Here on. So start here. Okay. Start here. Walk your feet over to the left edge of your mat. And then let your knees go down to the right. There you go. From here, we're coming over with both hands, walking the hands out wide. Like you're going to do a push up. If you want, straighten your left leg behind you with your toe pointed. So already we're starting to stretch that hip. Bend the knee at any time. If your body starts to yell at you, well, first let's just notice when the body whispers, when the body goes, then bend your knee. <laughs> bend the elbows, slowly come down, nose towards the floor, push back up. From here, take the left hand away. Reach it, and now inhale, open, and reach behind you. Big stretch for the fascia connecting tissues. Let's take that arm overhead and down to the floor. Push up, take it down. Right hand stays, press it up, reach, and open. We have one more. Left hand down, down to the floor. Press up, reach it forward, shaking hands. Open, reach back, and now come to center. Bend that left knee in. Bring the hands in, and now sweep your knees up. Let's walk both feet over to the right edge of our mat, and then our knees are going to sway over to the left. With our knees to the left, we're taking both hands over to the left as well. So already we're stretching from the back of your left hip underneath your right shoulder blade, it's a big movement. Hands are really wide, I would say shoulder width or wider if it's comfortable. Option to straighten that top right leg. Notice that the more you straighten the leg, the more that it's going to maybe tighten up your low back. You might even feel it stretching. Pull your right shoulder forward more and you're gonna stretch the entire right side of the body. Remember, you can bend the right knee at any time. Take it a breath. Exhale, come down. Big push-up movement. 
Keep the left hand on the floor, bring it up, right arm extends, and then sweep it up and sweep it back. Keeping a little bend in that left elbow. Bring it up, come forward, both hands down, lower down to the floor, easy does it, nice and slow. Inhale up, nice and slow. The body really appreciates being slowly oriented to stretches. And up, this is our last one, coming down, big breath in, reach it forward, and then open it up, almost looks like an interpretive dance movement. When you're ready, bring the hands down, let's bend both knees in. From here, we can safely start walking the hands around to come to all fours position. Now, once you come into all fours, Again, the floor, it, it can get really hard and the knees are such bony structures as it is. You are more than welcome to put some padding under the knees. Let's grab our yoga block from beside us, put it between the knees and thighs. And notice, notice that the ankles and feet are the same distance apart as the knees. This is very important when it comes to alignment. If your toes are touching, but your knees are open, that means that we don't have as much activation in the spine as what we could optimally have. So separate your feet so that they are right behind, ankles are right behind those knees, same distance as the block. When I get nitpicky with this, I go put a block between people's feet and between their knees. <laughs> from wherever you are, from this position, think about, slowly articulating the movement, the movement in the tailbone. You're gonna flip your hips back, drop the belly, push the shoulders away from the ears, and then open up your throat and chin, moving into cow position. This is strengthening the low back. When you're ready, find your breath, big inhale. Exhale, pull your belly button up and round your spine. Maybe squeeze that block and thrust the hips forward a little bit. Press down to the floor so you open the back of the heart into cat. When you're ready, slowly take it back, flipping the hips back, pressing the shoulders away from the ears, looking ahead, opening the throat. Exhale, pull the belly button up. Tailbone tucks under, press into the floor and drop your head. Two more, inhale, lift the hips back. Looking forward, press the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, navel up, dropping the head, cat position. Last set, inhale, cow, flipping the hips, pressing the shoulders back, opening the throat, push into the floor, straightening the arms. And then exhale, bring it in. When you're ready, let's find all fours position. Take your block and take it just off to the side of your mat. If your mat is rolled up or if you have any blankets or any props on the mat, go ahead and clear the workspace. We're taking our time, making our way up into a standing position. So many ways to get to standing. I like to say there are many paths, one destination, so make your way there as, as needed. I like to use my block to step one foot forward. Hand can go to the thighs for support, tucking the back toe, and then coming up to standing. Let's keep the knees soft. With the knees soft, hands can go onto your thighs. You can slide your hands down towards your knees, almost coming into like a a goalie position, right? Like in sports. So from this position, grab your block and place it between the knees and thighs. Seeing again that the knees, ankles, and feet are all the same distance apart. Whatever distance we have for the knees, the ankles and feet are gonna meet that. Keeping our knees soft, let's spread our toes out, walk the hands up, coming up into a neutral standing position. Keep squeezing into the middle of that block. Inhaling, sweeping the left arm back, up and overhead, one big circle sweep. Let's look up at the hand just for a moment so we can keep mobility in the neck and head. Now, if this hurts, 
look straight ahead or look over to the right. Imagine you're holding on to 100 helium balloons. Breathe into your upper left lung and reach. Shift your weight into the outer blade of your left foot. Reach again, big inhale. Exhale, sweep that arm back and lower the hand down. Right arm comes up, big inhale. Okay, blood pressure? Okay, Divi? Uh, okay, all right. Shift into the outer part of the right foot. We can look up. So looking up is going against gravity. It's gonna be the most pressure. We wanna be able to do this just for mobility, but you don't have to do it for a long period of time. Unless you're planning on going to the air show, you don't need to be doing this. Big inhale, shift into the outside of your right foot, hold it onto 100 helium balloons, breathe into the upper right lung, big breath. And now exhale, sweep it back. Let's take our block away from the thighs, down to the floor. Inhaling, sweeping both arms up and overhead. Nice big breath in, reach it up. Option to look up or just looking to where the wall meets the ceiling. We're shifting forward and back, feeling for our body's center of gravity, working with proprioception. It's a big word that just means all the different parts of the body that go, where am I and how do I not fall over? That's what we want to recruit, the don't fall over muscles. Shifting forward, lift the heels just enough to swipe a credit card under your feet and keep the knees soft. Walk the feet in so that they are lined up under your pelvis bones. More, even more, even more. There you go, right there. So you're gonna imagine the block is between your knees. Squeeze in, imagine that block is between your knees. Lift up a little more, act surprised, one, two, three. Good. When you're ready, drop your heels, take the hands out to the side with a flat back. We're reaching our hands back behind us with the palms facing down. From here, pull the pelvis forward as you exhale. And now inhale, bend your knees, pull it back. Hands to the thighs, working with standing cow. Big inhale, bend the elbows. Keeping your hips back, press into the legs and lift your upper rib cage. Exhale, relax your rib cage, relax the head and neck. Shake the head, yes, and turn it left and right. Come up halfway with a flat back. Keep the elbows bent and pull them in tight to your side. As you inhale, start to straighten the arms without moving the hips, pulling up the rib cage. Good. Act surprise. One, two, three. Bigger surprise. Exhale, bend the elbows. Thrust your tailbone down and forward. And now relax your upper back. Shake the head yes and turn it left and right. Relax your whole spine. Hang the arms loose like a rag doll. You could reach the right hand over to your left elbow and then the left hand over to the right elbow. So you're crisscrossing the arms, reaching across arm to arm. Let the elbows hang with a big exhale. Boom. Big inhale. Bigger exhale. One more. Big inhale. Bigger exhale. Remember, the bigger the exhale, the more we relax the jaw, the greater the potential to really create a long spine, taking tension away. From here, we're stepping our left foot back and lowering our knee, then taking the right foot back and lowering the knee. Taking the knees out to the width of the hips or pelvis bones. Having our hands down in front of the body, seeing that we have a straight line from the top of that arm bone, shoulder, elbow, wrist alignment. If we bend our elbows, let them go out to the side for just a moment, and now pull the elbows in towards your thighs, keeping the elbows there, straighten the arms. 
tuck the left toe under, keep the left toe tucked and graze it along the floor, pushing back behind you. Remember to smile. That's the advanced version. When you're here, lift the heel only to the height of your hip. The biggest mistake people make here is trying to lift way too high and that can actually um, pinch your sciatic nerve. Sweep the, the left leg over your right heel and maybe tap it down outside the right side of your mat. Nice big hip stretch. You might feel this on your hip. If you don't feel it, it's still happening. From here, let's take the left foot to center. Lift it up again, inhale, and now exhale, bring it in and find center. Let's tuck our right toe under. Check in with the elbow foundation. Elbows bend, pull the arms back, straighten the arms, and now slide the right foot back. Option to lift the heel, not too high. Let that right hip press down. Imagine you're trying to balance like a delicate vase full of flowers on your tailbone. So you wanna be completely level with those hips. Sweep the right foot over the left leg. Maybe tap it down outside the left side of the mat. Big inhale, check in with your arm foundation. Press, bring it to center. Press it up, inhale. And now exhale, bring it in. From here, touch your toes together. Open the knees as wide as the low back permits. Start to slowly push the hips back towards the heels. And your hips may or may not touch your heels. There are so many parts of the body that are going to be involved in this stretch. This is known as a wide knee child's pose. Breathe out from the throat. And really relax the jaw and stay connected to any sensations in your low back and hips. Move your jaw around, maybe even stick your tongue out, like when you're at the doctor and they say, say ah. Big inhale, bigger exhale. One more, big inhale and a bigger exhale. When you're ready, slowly come forward. Use the hands to guide the body up from kneeling. Knees in. Sweep your feet over to the right edge of the mat. And now sit the hips back. From here, we're taking our feet all the way around. From seated, let's bend our knees. We can always add in again, cushion underneath the hips or a small perch. From where we are with those knees bent, let your left leg completely just hang out. It's gonna do whatever it wants. You can even bring it in if that's more comfortable. We're working with the right leg, pulling the toes in. Imagine your right foot is flush to a wall. So it might even feel like we're rotating that whole bone in just a little bit. You can hold on to your right leg if you want, pull it in and lean back slightly. From here, hover the heel just one inch off the floor and continue to focus on rotating your entire femur bone in. I used to cue it, rotate the foot in, but some people were start to so leg and they're able to sickle their ankles in unnatural ways. The ankle's not moving at all. It's the femur bone, and it gives the illusion that the foot is rotating, but it is this bone in your hip. One more big inhale. Exhale, relax that leg, shake it off, move the ankle around. All right, right leg relaxes, left knee bends, pull the toes in, imagine a wall here, Hold on to the femur bone, largest bone in the body. Push your hip down. Lean back a little bit. Act surprised. The way you get a nice rib engagement. Lift. Gentlest little hover. Gentlest hover. Remember, rotate in, but it's the bone. It's not the actual foot. It's the femur bone that's coming in. We're going to hold it there while we sit tall. 
Continue to breathe easy, big inhale, bigger exhale, big inhale, bigger exhale. Good. Keep rotating in with the bone, not with the foot, just with the femur bone. Flat foot. Just one more. Big inhale, bigger exhale. Relax the legs, shake off the knees. Inhale, arms come overhead. Seated forward fold, big reach. Exhale, take it down. Hands are facing the feet. Relax your head and neck. And just allow the back of the lungs to open. Allow the ribs to stretch. Breathe along the sides of your spine into the low back, middle back, and upper back. I am going over by just a couple more minutes today. Since we started late, I just want to be sure that I deliver the 45 minutes. Big inhale and exhale. One more seated forward fold and exhale. From here, let's take our time to slowly come up. We'll shift forward on our yoga mat with the knees bent. We do not need our yoga block. Let the knees sway a little bit left and right. We're preparing to come down into final relaxation. So this is our hard reset on the spine. And it's exactly where we started, constructive resting position. Roll over onto one side. Let your body choose. There's no right or wrong with this. We're simply coming down into side line and then rolling over onto our backs. So you could stay lying on your side at any time. You could even lie down on the belly. You're also welcome to stay seated or to um, sit up in a chair, even if that's more comfortable. From this position, maybe we walk the feet out just wider than the hips. So we have the feet in that wide foundation. This is the same foundation that the body used for windshield wiper twisting. It's a familiar place. We're gonna change it up a little bit. Feet are wide. Let the knees come in to touch. So knees are in, feet are wide. Opening up the sides of the hip. Hopefully alleviating any excessive tension or stress that might be trying to hide in the back. And that can happen sometimes because we've been mindful to work those body parts, but it can also happen just because of light, the stress response. Now notice the breath again. The breath is our most powerful tool. Okay, I'm gonna change that. Our brain is our most powerful tool. So the brain telling the body how to breathe, prana yama. Tell the body to inhale, take a big breath in. And now tell the body it's okay to let go and let it go. Mind and body working together harmoniously, inhale and exhale. Noticing when the body feels most open to receive the breath. And perhaps even feeling as if the inhale is completely effortless. Exhale even more effortless. Let it go. There is a practice in yoga called aparigraha. It means let it go. And in those moments when we may be harboring tension or where there may be pain in the body, our breath can show us how to let go. Relaxing the jaw, accessing that craniosacral connection the jaw and the hips communicate with each other. So relax the jaw. When you're ready, separate the knees and walk the feet in, maybe until the toes are almost touching. 
Let the knees sway a little bit left and right. Just tuning into this very lowly sway with the knees, massaging the low back, massaging the kidneys, adrenal glands, hopefully helping the body flush out any stress hormones and toxins. When you're ready, allow the body to roll over onto one side. And again, we just stay there for a couple of breaths, taking pressure off the spine. When your body is ready, slowly press up. Coming into any seated position. Sitting nice and tall, taking a big breath. Bigger exhale. Try exhaling like you're going to fog a mirror. Big inhale. Exhale. Bringing the hands together. Opening and closing gesture of namaste. From here we can bow. Have a fantastic day. Namaste. All done. Thank you. Bye, Judy. Good deal. Yeah. That's some work today. No, the golf lesson. Mess, it, mess everything up. Don't mess it up with golf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Mr.